Hello folks, I wanted to make a video in response to um, James at Star Mini Gaming. Um, he had a question last week about uh, why do I play Warhammer? And I was hoping to get it done last week, but things got pushed back, and so I'm doing it tonight. And I style my channel as being a dedicated Warhammer channel, and Warhammer is the only game I play, and in many respects, I think there's lots of really interesting games and certainly really cool um, models elsewhere. But for me, um, I only play Warhammer and I don't really have any itch to really do anything else. So I thought it was an interesting question and one that I, I felt I should you know try to come up with some sort of answer for. Um, so some of the most more obvious reasons why someone might play Warhammer. Games Workshop is, you know, the biggest company in the industry. Um, most wargaming uh, players uh, know of Warhammer. A lot of them have or, or, or do uh, play Warhammer. And because of that, it's easy to find uh, games and communities um, uh, that, that play those games. But I tend to think that they're, given the longevity of Warhammer, there's usually a personal story behind anyone that plays and most people that play Warhammer have been playing it for, or, well, I wouldn't say most, but a, a lot of players have been playing it for, you know, a very long time. So, I started playing Warhammer 40k in the late 1990s um, during the transition between second and third. I think third must have just launched because... Uh, a few of the people I initially talked to hadn't played it yet. Um, and actually, the first game I ever saw was uh, Second Edition, I believe. You know, of course, they didn't really explain that necessarily, but there were only like 10 or 12 models on the board. And I remember watching that game, and I was that, you know, pretty young kid, I guess, before I went to college. Um, watching the game and one guy had like a terminator and it was behind like some rubble and the opponent threw all these uh attacks and shots at him and couldn't kill it and i just thought that was such a kind of an interesting narrative and of course the idea of like a, a squad of these guys sounded so cool to me um and i was fixed with the game fairly fairly soon after that and for the first Four or five years, I was in the hobby. I only played 40k, and I, you know, I think 40k is a, an awesome game. So I was absolutely fixated first. I think on on the lore. Like I think I bought the third edition Space Marine Codex, and I remember walking home with that and reading through it, and just the stories and the concepts. I just absolutely loved. And the idea of this really archaic world in the future was, uh, for me, I thought that was really, really cool. And I got involved with a couple other specialist games in the next, you know, couple years. But they're all Warhammer worlds, and it's the basic concepts that really stuck with me. So, I got into fantasy in about 2003-ish, in the middle of 6th edition. 6th edition probably just launched relatively soon. Um, but I had, um, again, that wasn't really like an active choice on my part. Um, I was uh, living with a, a group of, of, of players. Um, and they all played 40k. Uh, but they also played fantasy on the side. Um, and they... Uh, you know, they started to kind of think that fantasy was a bit better. They started to encourage me to, 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 to start playing that as well. So that's how I got into fantasy, um, and I kind of moved away from 40k after that. Um, I would say since about 2005, like the last 10 years, I've probably only played three games of 40k. Now, it's funny because I still remember all the rules. I still remember and I, I keep up to, like, I still have own um, the rule books and codexes. And uh, I'm kind of an idiot because I keep buying a bunch of 40K stuff. Like, I actually bought a bunch of Space Wolves um, 
um, early 2014, I guess. Um, and I, you know, I still keep up to date what's going on with it. But I, I, I moved away from 40k not really by choice. Like it wasn't like I thought, well, 40k wasn't that fun or something. It's just more, more my gaming options for 40k were reduced. We, um, I got married and we started started moving around quite a bit. And uh, you know, I just didn't. Most of the time I played, I was playing to people that I knew and that were like my. Uh, people that I would consider to be uh, a per pretty close uh, gr group of friends, and like the, I hate playing against random people. Um, I actually used to do like a lot of tournament play, but I'm not a huge fan of just like uh, going down to the random club, and so that's part of the reason why I I haven't played uh, a game of 40k since. Well, uh, other than those two or three exceptions. I actually do have a game lined up for next weekend though, so I, as I said, I'm at the beginning of this year, I'm hoping to get back into 40k and I'd like to you know, work on some of my 40k models because I have, I have a lot of 40k armies. But um, my wife is probably one of the other reasons why I switched to fantasy for the most part. And again, I really like fantasy, but my actually preference in terms of fluff and lore is probably 40k. Um, my wife though prefers playing fantasy she she doesn't really like playing 40k so i'm not going to force her to play a game she doesn't want to play and i'm i'm quite happy that she wants to play fantasy to begin with so that's why i went with that um but what i would point out here is that you know both the reasons why i got into into warhammer either 40k or fantasy were pretty uh, somewhat passive you know I, I saw someone play 40k and I picked up the box I didn't know anyone at the time I just thought boy this game looks really cool and uh, being the obsessive person that I am and kind of a collector right from the beginning I had my first game of 40k I had 2,000 points of blood angels um, and immediately realized, you know, I didn't know what I was doing with army design. <laughs> and uh, I think I switched to Black Templar fairly quickly. And, um, but yeah, and again with fantasy, it wasn't like some act of choice. So what I would say is like, it's not like um, you go into this and think, you know, these are all my options. I'm going to play each. I'm going to choose the one that fits my style. I mean, maybe people do that today. That's not been my experience. I, I got hooked on kind of the, the artwork and the fluff. And I had a pretty decent gaming group even initially. I, I you know, I guess that'd be the one exception where I did start to play against completely random people and really got involved. Um, but it, there wasn't a lot of comparative shopping. At the time, it was the, the only major game really that was visible at least I don't really recall any other games um, maybe there were like a couple but there certainly weren't as large or as visible so like I try not to have like a you know I'm, I, I like Warhammer I, I I'm I'm uh, certainly not anti games workshop but I don't try to have like an ego like about it like if someone wants to play other games I'm you know that's perfectly legitimate because I think it's in different circumstances, I could have definitely seen myself playing other games. If my group of friends had been playing a completely different game system, that could very well have been where I ended up. But I love playing the games, um, but they're really the only one reason why I remain a supporter of Warhammer. So, as I said, I think the lore and fluff are really what got me going. Going through that Space Marine Codex was so awesome. Um, the 40k fluff, again, as I've said, is really what appealed to me. I've, you know, my background is in history, and I really like that dark art feel. Um, there are a number of things that really make me uh, attached to to um, to Games Workshop and Warhammer. Um, I. I played Hero Quest when I was like 9 or 10 and absolutely loved that game. I was obsessed with it. I played Battlemasters soon after. 
and uh, learning after I got into Warhammer that those are actually Warhammer games too. That kind of really draws like a, a, a lifelong experience with that with that game system and and that that universe as a whole. Um, this image is uh, Inquis Exterminatus. It's uh, an art book that came out. Oh geez, um, be about two thousand two ish or so. I'd have to look at the date. And it's probably my favorite art book. I, I've I kind of collect all the uh, art books and novelty books. I absolutely think they're awesome. This one in particular is probably my favorite. Uh, it's really dark. It's all black and white, with the exception of like two or three uh, color. Uh, photos of the box art I believe it's all 40k stuff um, actually at one point I owned like five or six copies of this so, uh, my local store um, the manager was my roommate and he had like a, a, a you know he had a, a bunch of copies of this book and no one was buying them so um, he had a deal where if you buy a hundred bucks you get a, a copy of the book and so I did that like five times and he was mildly annoyed but at the same time it wasn't like anyone else was interested in it so um yeah so i, I gave them it was christmas gifts uh, several years ago but uh yeah I, I i think it's awesome uh the art director at games workshop uh, uh um he's something he's someone that i've had a, a long time connection with um he I actually got an autograph of, of for him uh, in my eighth edition fantasy book, um, but he did the uh, well. He did some of the art in the Tolkien bestiary, and as a really young child, I used to go to the library a lot, and I'd grab that book. I must have taken that book out like a dozen or more times. Fascinated with the book. I now own like the hardcover. The reason why I bring it up is about like there's like I don't know maybe ten or twelve. Um, uh, uh, paintings and, and drawings in that book done by John Blanche and he's the, the art director of Games Workshop and again I love that book I love those particular art I, I was way too young at the time to like focus on artists um, but to find out years later that this guy's like the art director of Games Workshop was awesome so it's just like the, a number of just weird things throughout my life that seem to all <laughs> kind of draw me towards Warhammer. So uh, curiosity and uh, having people and friends that are really what got me into the game. And I used to game fairly regularly. That's definitely dropped off. Uh, and it's <laughs> obviously since I haven't played 40K and in you know much over the last uh, 10 years and to be honest like I'm lucky to maybe get a well, game of fantasy in every three weeks or so so it's not like I'm a huge fantasy gamer necessarily either um, but I would say what what keeps me in is just the obsessive collector in me um, and again it's because of my imagination and, and like the fluff and uh, just understanding the the lore and, and the the feel of the game, I absolutely love. So, even though I haven't been too engaged in local communities, I've always felt a great sense of renewal since I really started getting involved with the YouTube community. Um, even though I don't play that often or as often as I would like, I still feel like I'm really part of a community, and I haven't felt so immersed in a community um, as I had been right now with YouTube uh, as the last time I kind of felt that a immerse, immersive character would be back when I first began and I used to play you know every single week and get to know three or four you know other gamers and I don't know I'm not the only one in that scenario um, so I would characterize myself as fairly obsessive in general I'm kind of by nature a collector um, anytime I got into like card games, customized card games, magic, or I had a massive collection of S the Star Wars customized card game. I'd like every single card. Magic was a problem. <laughs> uh, I sunk a ton of money into that and I got out of it like three times and got rid of all my cards each time. Um, but even things like World of Warcraft, um, 
sunk in so many hours into that. But I also, it's not like I played one or two characters. I had to play every single character. So it's just kind of part of my nature. So as I said, before I played my first game of 40K, I had 2,000 points of Space Marines. Um, this picture is uh, my, my most of my models um, assembled in these like little plastic drawers. And I have lots of boxes of books and and board games and comics and card games uh, anything that's Warhammer related at all I collect um, I have about 4,400 models um, very obsessive personalities so I have them all written up in Excel sheets um, it's about 37 armies depends how you break it down um, it depends on how many times you want to kind of divide things. I have like a massive Eldar army that I bought off a couple friends, really. I haven't really bought much Eldar myself. But there's probably like enough there to do, you know, um, Altioch and, and um, a, a, a Belton and uh, maybe a couple others, probably Yulfway as well. And I've played Eldar like once. <laughs> so I, the, the, the curse of having so many armies is that you rarely play each, each army. Um, so I have, um, I have, what I like to say is I have uh, an army of, of every faction, which is pretty much the case. The only exception to that now would be Skatari, um, you know, the new 40k army. Um, just haven't got around to, to buying that up yet, but I have everything else. And, uh, you know, if I only played maybe a game every other week, you might get a chance to play each army like once a year. <laughs> so th there's a problem with owning so many models. Um, and it just kind of became obsessive because, you know, and I, I it, it's a problem that I absolutely love because going forward, um, my plans are to continue to expand. Um, there's lots of Imperial Guard armies I don't have. Um, lots of Space Marine armies I don't have. So th there's plenty of room to expand. My biggest problem, of course, is that I wasn't really active in the hobby. So like, it's, it's like this compulsive des need to be able to play anything and everything. And uh, I just loved plastic. I guess um, because most of my armies are unpainted uh, I did a quick calculation the other day and it's probably about 20% of the collections painted and that's obviously absolutely uh, horrendous so that's what I've been working on um, painting it up but the reason why I would say I'm a collector is because even if I never play I still buy things um, there are many years when I rarely played whatsoever, and yet I still collected models, books, cards, comics. And uh, mid-2014 through mid-2015 is a good example. We were traveling all across the country. I didn't play a single game at all uh, for about a period of one year. And yet I still bought a ton of stuff during that period. Um, so for me, like saying I only play Warhammer is a way to kind of create a barrier where I can, where I don't need to buy and collect other things. Now it's it's kind of a a really horrible barrier because I there's so much to buy and Games Workshop's release schedule is you know impossible to keep up with. Um, but you know it it somewhat works. One of the reasons also why I probably don't get much into other games is because I, I like Warhammer and, you know, the amount of hobby time I have, you know, there's obviously a constraint on that. Um, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Uh, I'm missing anything. I mean, and I, like I said, I know there's other really great games out there, but Warhammer kind of is all I've ever felt a need to, to, to do. And if I played other games, I would play, play less Warhammer, and to me that's kind of a problem. So on a final note here, I would just want to say I, I, I'm happy to say that I've made more of a transition um, since July of last year 
into more of a hobbyist. Get involved with YouTube. Um, I've been painting almost every single day. There's probably only like four or five exceptions uh, to that in the past several months. Um, and that's been awesome because obviously I have a, a lot of work ahead of me. Um, I'm learning a lot of new techniques. Um, and I th think it's safe to say that I probably painted more since July in, in solid hours than I have in the entire time I've been in the hobby. So I've made a dramatic increase in the amount of time I put towards things. And I'm le learning a lot of, techni a lot of uh, new techniques. And I think that's a very good thing. And I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. So that's like uh, rather exhaustive reasons why I get into why I, I say I only play Warhammer because it's just it's such an extensive hobby as it is and I need to somewhat restrict myself um, because I'm I'm my own worst enemy but I, I really like the like as a as a collector I mean you, you I wouldn't say the I need to have the game like uh, if the game didn't exist I wouldn't probably be buying anything um, if, if you said well it's only going to be a collection that's only going to be on display ever that would be a huge problem for me but because it has like that potential it really um, motivates the imagination and I can I, I imagine like when I design my armies and when I buy models how they fit in the Warhammer world and the game is an extension of that it for me it plays out the fluff and uh, yeah that's my very long-winded explanation of why I play Warhammer thanks for watching guys bye